Changeable God. Changeable God, oh, changeable God. Unchangeable God. Oh, changeable God, oh, changeable God. Unchangeable God. Oh, changeable God, oh, changeable God. In other words, God does not change. Let us listen to this reading from Prophet Isaiah. I will come to the particular reading we're supposed to read according to the bulletin, but I want us to go to this reading for a purpose. Now, reading Isaiah, get your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 1 from 1 to 6. Sorry. Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38 from verse number 1 to 6. Now, about then Hezekiah fell ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Yahweh says this, put your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not live. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and addressed this prayer to Yahweh. Ah, Yahweh, remember I beg you that I have behaved faithfully and with sincerity of heart in your presence and done what you regard as right. And Hezekiah shed many tears. Then the word of Yahweh came to Isaiah, go and say to Hezekiah, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, David, says this, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I shall cure you in three days' time. You will go up to the temple of Yahweh and I shall add 15 years to your life. I shall save you and this city from the king of Assyria's clutches and defend this city for my sake and my servant David's sake. Amen. Amen. I hope everybody is hearing me with this microphone. Amen and amen. So what will you say at this point? Is God changing or changeable? What do you say about God? About with regards to this episode that was read to us. Now I want to tell you something about prayer today. I want us to discuss something about prayer. What is prayer? An address to God. Communication with God. Moses communicated with God as, as the Bible said. In Exodus 32, in Exodus 20, and many places. Speaking with God. Listening to God. Talking to God. Praising God. Thanking God. I want us to get the best form of prayer from the Gospel of St. John. Turn to John chapter 7. No, chapter 11 from 17 to 42. John chapter 11 from 17 to 42. That presents to us, maybe from my own writing, the best form of prayer. When you go to this narrative, you will discover that after the death of Lazarus, Jesus was told that 
Lazarus was dead. And he left for Bethany. Immediately, the apostles followed him. On entering Bethany, Martha was told that Jesus was around. Immediately, Martha went to him, knelt down and said, verse 21, I read, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Amen and amen. Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. I want you to look at that verse again. John chapter 11 verse 21. Lord, if you were here, you see, for you to receive miracle, you know, many times we are looking for miracle. Miracle, miracle, miracle. When Christianity went to Athens, it was all about conversion. When it went to Rome, it was about repentance. When it went to Ephesus, it was about philosophy. When eventually Christianity came to America, it was about prosperity. And when eventually Christianity came to Nigeria, what, what is it all about? <laughs> miracle. It's not all about miracle. It's all about having Jesus, the source of life. When you have him, you have everything. In him, Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, the world's everything, the world's the fullness of God in bodily form. You don't need to look for miracle. What you need to look for is Jesus, the source of life. As chapter 3 verse 15, the fountain of life, the fount of, the, of living water. If you have him, if you have Jesus, you have everything. And that's why St. Paul said to the Philippians, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, God will grant you everything you need according to the glorious riches that is in Christ. If we will look for Christ. Why am I saying this? If you are looking for miracle, but you have no faith, you are wasting time. That is why people will keep on wasting their money. Spending time going to one prophet or the other. You keep wasting your money, wasting your time, wasting your resources, wasting your energy. The time would have used to make out something out of your life. You waste it looking for prophets. Why not talk to Jesus even in your heart? Or you come to the church and talk to Jesus. You can seek for assistance from a real man of God. Those who help you, he's not God. The only savior is Jesus. If anyone tells you that he will save you, that person is a liar. And if any miracle happens, don't ever call anybody. It is Jesus who is doing it. Amen and amen. I want us to understand this now because when we talk about prayer, people will think that prayer is going from one place to another. After going, after moving from one house, shake many people who have gone to one, who left the church and went to one church Shake if they have stopped with one after two years. Just make a kind of brainstorming about those you know who left the church. Think about how many churches they have gone to. Amen and amen. Until you believe that the kingdom of God is with you. That is only when the miracle will start happening. happen. Amen and amen. So I'm talking about one who believes one who has faith with has faith there will be no miracle check all the miracles Christ did if you go to Matthew chapter 9 you will see maybe if you read from 20 verse 20 to 34 you can spot about three miracles or more Christ did just in that episode that narrative 
of Matthew chapter 9 from verse 20 to 34. You will discover that in verse 18, somebody came to him and said, my daughter is sick. Please come and lay hands on her and she will be healed. What a fate. And immediately Jesus did that. Because the woman believed. My daughter is sick. Just come and lay hands. And eventually if you read down, you will discover that in Matthew chapter 9 verse 27, Christ went and laid hands. And that was the end. Because the woman had faith already. That was the kind of faith I want to bring out here in a special way when we are praying. And if you go to, again, in that same Matthew chapter 9, verse 21, we discover another miracle. The woman that was having severe bleeding, the human rich woman, she said, if only I will touch the cloak, the edge of his cloak, I will be healed. If only the woman had faith already. If you do not have faith, you can pray from Nancy tomorrow. Nothing will happen. You can go to so-called men of God and powerful men of God, even with occultic powers and whatever, and nothing will happen. I want to tell you something about prayer. The kind of prayer Martha prayed. If you go to the same Matthew chapter, chapter 9, verse 32, you will discover also, maybe you go to verse 27 first. You discover that after healing that man, that daughter, Jesus, Jesus Christ now was passing, trying to enter a house. And two blind men came to him and said, Please, son of David, have pity on us. And what did Jesus tell them? Do you believe? that I'm able to do that? And they said, yes, sir. They don't know him. It's only that they heard people shouting, Jesus of Nazareth, son of David. And they just said that. And just asked them, do you believe Jesus should, needs your faith? He needs your faith before you could be healed. What I'm saying is, it's just an allusion, a reference to the kind of prayer matters made. Martha started praising God with faith. If you were here, Lord, if you were here, imagine that kind of faith. In other words, Martha knew Christ. Because this kind of statement does not just come. He said, she said, if you were here, and to tell you that they really believe in Christ, if you go to the same John chapter 11, verse 32, you will notice that Mary was in the house when Jesus entered Bethany. Mary didn't know. She was crying with people. And the Jews were there trying to protect her. And then Martha ran and then told Mary, the master is here. And when Mary heard that the master is here, Mary got up immediately. And the Jews thought she was going to the tomb to cry. And they followed her. So she went and they saw she was going to Christ. When she found Christ, she knelt down again and said the same thing. She was not there when Martha uttered her own. And coming again, she repeated the same thing. Lord, if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I saw many things there. In their statement, I saw many things. One, they praised him. Imagine saying someone, if you were here, I know what you can do. I know the stuff you are made of. I know the quality. Ah! And you, after praising the person, what do you think the person will do? If the person can do that thing you are talking about, wouldn't that person do it? I want to tell you that the best form of prayer is praise. Sometimes you spend time praising devil, talking about what devil had done. 
talking about what devil had done and then glorifying the devil. And then you have no time to praise God. I want to tell you the truth. If you want to change your life, if you want to change everything about you, bring down time and start praising God. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. To tell you that praise is something great. Praising God is something cherishable. Something very rewardable. Something very good. Something very renowned. Remember what happened after the healing of the ten lepers in Luke chapter 17? When eventually Christ, one of them that was cured, came to meet Jesus. The Bible said, Ah, what about the rest? We are not ten made whole. Only one came back to praise God. Only one. And the Bible said, he said to the person, go, you are made whole. You have been made whole. Now, you know, there is difference between healing and then curing. When you are cured from the heart, when you are healed, you might be healed of one disease or the other. When you go to the hospital now, you are agonized of headache or whatever, or stomach ache, you are healed. You are given medicine for that to be cured. You still have other diseases in your body. You have not made, made, you have not made, made whole. You are not yet whole. But when you are whole, that means you are free from all kinds of diseases. You are being healed totally. It's a total and holistic healing. And that is what praise does. When you start praising God from your heart, and you forget all the devil had done, and you start thanking God and praising him, oh, if you could read down in that the same John chapter 11, you will discover that when Jesus came after the praise of these two sisters, Jesus Christ came. And the Bible said the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. John chapter 11 verse 35. And after that, he, te- he told them, roll up, removed the stone. And they removed the stone they used in covering the, the tomb. And what did Jesus do? Jesus knelt down and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayers. He started thanking God again. I want to tell you that there is something about praise and thanksgiving. That is why the highest prayer in the church is hol- the Holy Mass. The Holy Mass is a prayer of what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to God for giving us Christ. Thanksgiving to God for allowing us to know Christ, to be part of Christ, to have an inheritance with Christ. And after that, another form of prayer that is as great as that is what? The Holy Rosary. The Holy Rosary is all about praise. Hail Mary. Full of grace. And you think that after praising her, she will not do something. There's something about praise. There is something about thanksgiving. If you will learn the habit of praising and thanking God, I want to tell you, that miracle you are looking for, you, give, give, you keep giving testimony from one testimony to another. From one testimony to another. From one testimony to another. And somebody here, somebody here, I mean, somebody here who is looking at me, we give such kind of testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Prepare for your testimony because you have it. If only you believe in what I'm saying. Believe and you'll be saved. The Bible said in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible said, give thanks to God Always give thanks to God. Always, if you look at the prayers of some great men, let us look at the prayers of Tobit and Sarah. They were heard the same day. Go to your book if your book has detailed canonical books. 
I mean, if you if you, if it is a Catholic Bible, it will have two beads as one of the books there. Is your Bible having two beads? If your Bible has two beads, it is a complete one. But if it does not have two beads, then it is not a Catholic Bible. Remember that it was Catholic church that gathered all the books of the Bible about 100 AD. 100 years after the death of Christ, the Catholic church gathered the Bible. So if anybody is saying anything that is not in the Bible of the Catholic church, tell the person that this is not a complete Bible. Your Bible should be complete. It was the Catholic church that gathered the Bible. And they remember it was one church till about 16th century. That is 1,600 years after the death of Christ. So it has been Catholic. It was even a Catholic saint called Athanasius that gave chapters and verses to, Bi to the Bible. Do you think that Jesus Christ was quoting Bible and telling them, Oh, John, bring your pen and paper. Right. And John will write chapter 1. After writing chapter 1, he say, okay, stop. Okay, write. Chapter 1, verse 1, John will write. Chapter 2, verse 2, John will write. Ah, it's not true. <laughs> amen and amen. All these books were gathered. And after looking at them, they said this one will be good to admonish, to instruct. As the Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the, the Bible is inspired. It's a, it has a divine inspiration, which is used for instruction, for teaching of faith, and then for directing a man of God, and so on. So what I'm saying is that your Bible should be complete. Get a complete Bible, and it should have Tobit, Tobit as part of it, and other books that should be there. If you read Tobit chapter 3 from verse 2, you will see the kind of prayer Tobit prayed. The kind of prayer this man who was blind already prayed. And then, eventually, the kind of prayer Sarah, in the same chapter, prayed. And they were heard the same day, the same time. God sent Archangel Raphael to come and visit them. I pray that as we have gathered here, praying and then renewing our spirit within this Lenten period period, that God will send his archangel Raphael to visit us individually and personally and hear our prayers in Jesus' name. When archangel Raphael visited them, when he was about to depart from them, he said, I am one of the angels, seven angels, that gather the prayers of the righteous men and take them to heaven. Amen. Amen. That one apart, let us continue with what we are saying now. If you read from verse 2, see the kind of prayer this holy man prayed. He said, Oh Lord, you are just in all your actions and all your ways are merciful and just. What kind of prayer is this? Is it praise or what? Is it not praise? This man was blind. Sometimes, just one thing will come about you. You will start experiencing one problem or the other. You will start cursing God. God, you are not, there is nothing like God again. You are not there. If you are there, I wouldn't have been suffering. You start cursing God. Many people have abused God. Why not start praising God? Bring out on and start praising God. When you start praising God, you will draw down the presence of God. And in the presence of God, there is deliverance. Obadiah 1.17. There is healing. There is liberty. When you attract, praise attracts the presence of God. When you start praising God, you many people, there is one kind of deliverance will be doing now. We will stop everything and start praising God. And God will just do the work. I learned something from Foot in Shin. Because one day he was doing deliverance. He just went to the back 
and allowed the, the girl to stand before the Eucharist. She, he was just saying the rosary. And then one day, the inspiration came to me. Somebody was carried, brought to the father's house. And she was carried to the chapel. I just asked her to be there at the chapel. Or at the altar, before the chapel, the, the Eucharist. I started praising God with rosary. Because whenever you are praising a lady, you are praising her to praise God for, on your behalf in a special way. She knows how to do that. As she did in John chapter 2. I said same the rosary and I allowed her to be there. I want to tell you the truth. Before you could finish the rosary, she was fully healed. And then not the kind of healing that will just happen today and tomorrow it will, and nothing will happen again. She has been having one problem or the other and she will pray for next morning it will continue again. But after praying, saying that kind of prayer that day, at least till I left the parish last year, she was never brought again for that kind of sickness. But this is the person that was carried to the father's house. And when she was going, she was going on her own. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. May Virgin Mary obtain that kind of healing for you in Jesus' name. I'm talking about praise as a serious form of prayer. When you are praising God, oh, you are attracting blessings. And that is the kind of prayer to be prayed. In verse 3, some other kind of prayer. But I'm, I'm particularly interested in the prayer of praise. If you go to the same Daniel, chapter 3, verse 24, you will see Sarah saying the same kind of prayer. Sarah said, sorry, it should be Dan Toby chapter 3, verse 11. Verse 11. You are blessed, O Lord, my God, and blessed is your holy and glorious name through all the ages. You are blessed. He started blessing God. I want to you to learn this from today. Instead of not praising God, don't pray. Don't talk about your problem. Don't talk about your petition. Just praise God and then you can praise God and go. When you praise God, you are acknowledging the power of God to be the creator and also the redeemer of the whole universe. You are appreciating the quality of God. You are observing that he is the greatest. And when you do that, when you acknowledge that, you will see the power of God. Amen and amen. When Martha and Mary acknowledge the power in Christ, he said to them, if you believe, you will now see the power of God. You will see the power of God. Because they believed. He said, you will see the power of God. And eventually they saw the power of God. I am telling you here, as you are here listening to me, I pray that as we have gathered within this week to encounter Jesus in a special way, that you are going to see the power of God in your life and your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Something happened again. When Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were thrown into the fire, if you go to Daniel chapter 3, you will observe that from verse 24, in the midst of flames, they were singing to God and praising the Lord. Daniel chapter 3, verse 24. They were praising God in the midst of fire. It's a form of prayer that is very efficacious. We are looking for something that is, that is working, that will give us a great result. 
Start praising God. Start praising and acknowledging the power of God. Worship God with praises. Some people, if it is in the village, you see them singing one kind of songs. A kind of trying to mock their neighbor or make caricature of their neighbor. And they will have time to sing it for a long time with all kinds of devotion or in a community where people are many living together. And someone will be singing one kind of song and then we have devotion with passion. Passion, singing one kind of and then appreciating the devil and praising the devil. Instead of bringing out time with that kind of passion, singing to Christ, singing to God. And when you do that, you will benefit a lot. It will be to your own glory. And uh, Azaria, in Daniel chapter 3 verse 26, said, Blessed and worthy of praise are you, O Lord, God of our fathers. Your name is glorious forever. And so on. In the midst of fire. When you are tormented by the vicissitudes of life, problems of this life, what you cannot explain, challenges and trials, forces of darkness, Ephesians chapter 6 says, principalities in the heavenly places. What approach do you give to them? Praise God. Forget those things. Forget their troubles. Start praising God. And God will trouble your trouble. And somebody say, Amen. In Daniel chapter 10, Daniel was said to be praying three times daily. And what is his prayer? Giving thanks to God. The Bible made it very clear that Daniel gives thanks to God morning, afternoon, and night. I knew somebody who was looking for God's intervention. And what was he doing? He would just go to the chapel and start praising God. He would praise God with the rosary, with every other form of praise. He was in a serious trouble because he started a business and he was an agent like. There was this white woman that was, you know, sending goods to him and he was an agent in Nigeria, kind of. Or for that woman. And many people were buying the goods from him. And they went to the back and blackmailed him. Said all kinds of wicked statements and calumny against him. And then the woman withdrew all the money. She was allowing him to be, to be using, you know, to be bringing goods and then Exporting and importing. A kind of businessman you would know. Someone will have, leave you with some goods on credit so that you could be covering up and then the woman withdrew the whole money and this man could not do any business again. So this man started nine days prayer before the Eucharist. He would get up in the morning straight to the church, stayed there praising God, he would say the rosary. And on the sixth day, something happened. Where he was praising God. The Chinese woman called. And said, Emma, please, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't understand what was going on. Please. Let us continue where we stopped. Without going to anybody or going to do that and do that and doing one sacrifice or the other and then fighting people, he went and appealed to the Lord. 
in thanksgiving and praise. And the Bible said, in Psalm 118, verse 6, the battle is mine, it's not yours. In Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 20, he says, I will fight your battle. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 30, he says, the battle is mine. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, from verse 15, he says, I will fight your battle. Why not praise God and allow him to fight the battle? And he said in Romans chapter 12, vengeance is mine. Do not revenge. I will avenge for you. Amen and amen. Children of God, I want you to live as children of God. God has his own way of doing things. He doesn't want us to be doing like those who are unbelievers, who do not believe. There is way God wants us to be doing things, and it will be even easier for us. Do not model your life according to the contemporary, how people are doing it. No matter is fight, fight, fight. God wants to fight for you. And you do it in a way that you will not have pain or any scratch upon yourself. At the end of the day, everything will be to his glory. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Something happened in the aircraft. That is aeroplane. Something happened. You know, those who are used to flying knows that at the time, you start having turbulence. When you're having turbulence, it will be as if uh, you people, you, your life is, is ending that day. <laughs> Just like what happened yesterday. That, that was why I was not here. I had to fly for something very urgent. So I flew to Patakot and came in again. Now, just like what happened yesterday, we were flying and then at the time we started having turbulence. And then there was this huge man, very tall. In all his hugeness, he was panicking. and panicking that one of the <laughs> air hostess asked him, sorry, are you okay? <laughs> And the young man was like, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> but when you look at him, you know. <laughs> so when everything settled, we started laughing with uh, somebody by my side. Now he said, nah, nah, this, you know, now, now, wow. Even this huge man <laughs> was shaking. <laughs> Amen. But the particular one that made me to be saying this is that there was this case that happened. The turbulence was so much. It was so huge, too great. And people were panicking. In fact, maybe they got an announcement that uh, the pilot was no more longer in control of the aircraft. People should try. And people were praying. They were shouting, jumping, the, moving up and down. And, and one guy, one young man was just here praising God. I feel he was praising God in his heart. Was not disturbed, was not panicked. He kept on praising God in, in his heart. And eventually, one woman went and tapped him. Are you not aware of what is going on? And the young man said, what is going on? See, can't you see? Can't you understand? Can't you see that the plane is going up and down and we are languishing here? And the young man said, oh, my father is the pilot. My father is the pilot. And the, and the woman said, as in, as in what? Even if your father is the pilot, don't you think we can all <laughs> get crashed down and the, <laughs> be lost? And the young man kept quiet, was talking to the father who owns the universe in praise and thanksgiving. And eventually, when the plane came to stability, the woman came to the guy and said, I can understand now that your father is the pilot. Amen and amen. If only you will start praising God, your father will keep on being the pilot. And if your father is the pilot, if your God is in charge, why should you be afraid? How could you be afraid? 
Your father is the owner of the universe. He has all the powers. In Luke chapter 17, verse 18, it was only the foreigner that came praising God. In Acts chapter 16, verse 25, we saw Paul and Silas who we are bound together with chains. They were still there in prison, yeah? Praising God. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. We used to sing, Paul and Silas, they pray after playing their song, after singing the holy. It, it was all about praising God. I want you to change your form of prayer. Sometimes we have time to begin to talk to the devil. Sometimes you are seeing you are fighting with the devil. Fighting with the devil. The devil, uh, some, a pastor told uh, uh, his congregation that tomorrow they are going to deal with the devil. If you are coming, get a cane. Get a whip. We are going to deal with the devil. And they came to the church. Everybody was having his own cane. And then the pastor said, it's time to deal with the devil. And they were, hey, ah, 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 ah. and they were flogging the devil. <laughs> and the devil, I guess the devil was laughing at them. <laughs> because he knows they lack knowledge. They are ignorant. You know, at the end of the day, the devil will go out and wait for them. Because he knows they lack knowledge and they don't know anything. Therefore, when they, once they finish that business and they come out, he start dealing with them again. It's not, it's not, our weapon of warfare is not words. Our weapon of warfare is not words. It's not carnal. It's not carnal. It's all about the sword of the spirit. It's all about having the sword. Spiritual war. Just thanking God. God will be doing his business. The work is his. It's all about appreciating God, praising him. Prayer is very important in your life. If you stop praying, you will stop having life. Prayer is like water. If you remove a fish from the water, what will happen to that fish? If you remove a tree from having water, the tree will start dying. If a child of God stops praying, that is why prayer is very important in our life and we must talk about it. We must, we must. Remember what happened in Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, verse 1 to 13. After the killing of James, Herod saw that people, the Jews were happy. He sought for Paul, Peter, and then captured Peter. He wanted to kill Peter. And people of God gathered in the house of John Mark and they were praising God. At the end of the day, you saw what happened. Peter was released. I want to tell you that prayer is very important. You must praise God. And when you praise God, you keep in to the will of God. And then, this one brings me to the prayer and the will of God. When you talk about prayer and the will of God, prayer takes you to the original, original plan of God. God has his own plan. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. It is for a better future. It is prosperity, goodness. Prosperity is not about having money. So having, having quality life, having good life. It is blessing, not a curse. So, God is goodness itself. Deus cuius natula bonitas. It was in Leo who said that. Deus cuius natula bonitas. God is goodness itself. Therefore, there is no how something that is good can give evil. Everything, every evil comes from the devil. So when there is evil in your side, when you pray, Prayer will pull you out from that evil and get you to the original plan of God for you, which is all about goodness. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So prayer does not change God because God is unchangeable. 
and unchanging. But prayer changes your situation. Prayer is part of God's will. The episode I read for us, the passage I read for us, Isaiah chapter 38 or 2 Kings chapter 18 about Hezekiah. Hezekiah also knew that part of the good will of God is prayer. That prayer is part of the will of God. That was why when it was announced to him that he would die, Isaiah went and told him that you gather his house together that he was to die. And he said, Lord, I never want to die. He started crying. And he started crying. And he started reminding God of what he had been doing. And then, what did the Bible say? God told Isaiah to go and tell him, What? What? You will not die. And then what will happen? More how many years? Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I prophesy to someone here that you will not die. You will live and you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And somebody say amen. The dead cannot praise God. Dead cannot praise God. You can only praise God when you are alive. And that's why St. Irenaeus said that man fully alive is the glory of God. When you are fully alive, you glorify God. You bless God. You praise God. So that's why we pray that to become healthy, we pray for healing. It is part of God's will that to become healthy. And that is why the Bible said in John 10.10 10, that he came, that you may have life and, may, and, and do what? And have it in abundance. It is part of the work of God, the will of God, that you have life. It is part of God's will that you, when you pray, your situation is averted, is changed. It is part of the, the God's will. Amen and amen. So do not waste time to start praying. You need to walk. When God told Abraham to come out, he said, come out. Abraham, walk out. There will be a move. You must move. You, can, you must work out your salvation. Amen and amen. And then that brings me to some people. Sometimes some people, you know, this prosperity gospel has dealt with many people. Some people are no longer working. They will be moving from church to church. And they're looking for miracle. Something with that will just manna. That will fall from the sky for them to eat. When God's after creating Adam. This was before the fall. In Genesis chapter 1. Or chapter 3. Okay, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. He told Adam, go and till. Till. The Hebrew word is abad. Abad means walk. To walk. Look after the garden. Multiply and increase. Make sure that these things are increasing. I have given them to you. I have planted them to you. But you must walk so that they will grow. Walk was not a result of fall. A result of the fall that happened. No. Work was an assignment. So people are now, they are very lazy. People are not ready to walk again. But St. Paul said, whoever does not walk, let him not eat. And people are going about looking for people that will pray them. Miracle, so seed, pay tight, do this. Even when you want to do those things, they will not be so wrong. But the issue is this. Your blessing is not tied to those things. Your blessing is tied to your efforts. When you make effort, God will bless your effort and you will increase and multiply. And somebody say, Amen. Amen and Amen. Heaven helps those who help themselves. Amen and Amen. So, part of the God's will is that you have to work. You have to have something doing. When you are not doing this, you have to praise God. And ask God, please multiply this I'm doing. And not when you pay tithes. And after paying tithes, you cannot be generous to your neighbor. Somebody by your neighbor will be dying. You cannot show love. 
You cannot be generous because you have just paid tithes. I heard someone saying on the radio, ah, I must go and pay my tithe to so that I will not have problem. And I say, oh, it's a pity. This person lacks knowledge. And we'll see chapter 4, verse 6 says, my people perish for want of knowledge, for lack of knowledge. That's you, hey, they're going to do this. And then, uh, so after doing that, he does not care about his neighbor. He does not care about those his subjects in the office. He has paid his tithe. How I wish people understand the truth. And all these rooms that are filled up with people clapping and jumping up everywhere will close down. They are multiplying every day because they are taxing people. And they have a kind of hoodwink them. That if you don't pay this tithe, anything that happens to you, anything that happens to you is because of that. It is a lie. It is a lie. If you want to give something to anybody, you are free. But your blessing is not tied to it. Your blessing is to, tied to work, hard working and praising God and being good to your neighbor. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So, today, the Bible says in Psalm 50 verse 15, Call upon me and I will deliver you. Prayer is very important. But you have to pray it in the way it will yield fruit. Call upon me. The Lord himself has made a, a promise that whenever you call upon him, you will be heard. And in Jeremiah chapter 3, 33 verse 3, he says, whoever calls upon me, cry to me, I will hear you. If you call upon me, I will hear you. I, mean, I will even leave it to you, the secret things. Secret things. Sometimes when you talk about secret things, you will think it's a, it's a magic. It's not a magic. I don't even see it as anything extraordinary. God just, if God wants to open your eyes, opens your eyes to some issue, just to help people to live a better life. But these days, you see people, they will do all kinds of occultic power issue. Do all kinds of manipulations so that they will start having spiritual knowledge. They will sell their souls to the devil so that they will be seeing vision and giving prophecy. I see prophecy and vision will take you to heaven. What takes you to heaven is righteousness. Living according to the will of God, praising God, and being good and being generous to your neighbors and loving them. When you love, then you are walking to heaven. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So John chapter 15, verse 7, whatever you ask in prayer, I will do for you. So God has promised us to pray. How do you pray is the most important thing. And we have been saying it. St. Mary Mandarin de Passy used to say that when a soul prays to God for any grace, he feels in a certain manner under an obligation to hear the soul and thank the soul because by that prayer, the soul opens to him a way of satisfying his desire, which is to dispense his grace to us. Please, if you are not praying, you will not have grace. You will not obtain grace of salvation and grace of doing good work. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I want somebody here to stand up and begin to pray for grace. Tell God that, Lord, I need your grace to follow. I need your grace to follow. You cannot do without the grace of God. I want you to tell God that you need his grace. When you correspond to greater grace, you will correspond to greater work. You can only do greater work if you have greater graces. That is what St. John of the Cross said in his book, Ascent to Man Camel. When you correspond to greater grace, you correspond to greater work. You cannot do work of God without God's grace. And God, that God's grace comes through prayer. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, 
The Bible will say, whatever you ask God with faith, you will receive. St. Bernard teaches that when we pray the Lord, if he does not give the grace we ask him, will grant us more useful gifts. St. Ambrose says that he who asks of God receives why he asks. And St. James says in James chapter 1 verse 5, if you need wisdom, ask God and he will give you wisdom. I want to tell you that there is nothing you cannot, cannot obtain through prayer. It's because you are not praying. And when you pray, you do not pray well. You will start talking about either praying for against your enemy, praying that. Jesus says, pray for your enemy. Stop praying, that, praying against your enemy. The, the only enemy we have is Satan. Tomorrow we are going to pray against him and against all the attacks he has done to your bodies and to your families. That is what we do while praying. We pray to dissociate him from your life. Devil is the only enemy. Even if someone is attacking you, it is the devil who is using that person. So you pray for the person to repent and for the devil to leave that person. Amen and amen. St. Rita of Castile prayed after the loss of her husband and God gave her grace. I want to talk about prayer and some saints. When St. Rita prayed through her patron saint, St. Augustine, and John, of, John the Baptist, they took her to the chapel of the nuns who refused her to come in as a nun because she had married and lost her husband and lost her two sons and came to the monastery. They said she could not be received. But when she started praying, two saints, Saint John the Baptist and Saint Augustine took her to a closed door we are that we are that was shot. They took her to that place, and in the morning, the nuns saw the person they have rejected. There is nothing prayer cannot obtain for you. I knew when I was dying, as a deacon, doctor said he could do nothing again to me, because I was I had surgery, and then the, the my small, small intestine was cut and joined. It was in prayer when I started talking to a lady. That a lady intervened. Doctor could not do anything again. Doctors could not do anything again. But through prayer, just singing to our lady, a noble queen. I've been married, a ah, noble queen. Just that. Praising this woman, and something happened. I vomited, and that was the end. That is why you are seeing me here alive. I want to tell you there's nothing you cannot obtain from God. Even if it has been, your case has been finished, the saints are saying that with prayer, everything is possible. I remember doing a program in Germany.